Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Jess and welcome or welcome back to Planted Hippie. Welcome back to another planty video, you guys. Today I do have a really fun video planned for you all. I will be showing you all my largest leaves in my plant collection. So if that does interest you, I please ask that you stick around, leave a like, maybe even a comment down below, or even hitting that subscribe bell so that you are notified every time I upload a new video and to help me keep on planting. Please also don't forget to follow me on Instagram at planted.hippie where I post new planty photos daily. So with that, let's go ahead and get into today's video. Alrighty, so I have sort of compiled my list of plants from smallest leaf to largest leaf. I do have quite a few plants on this list, so I think it'll be a really good variety. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first plant I do have on my list today is my Philodendron varicosum. So I will be showing a b-roll of plants that I cannot physically pick up and bring in front of the camera, which will be most of them because again, they are my largest leaves. So we are starting with my Philodendron varicosum, which is one of my favorite philodendrons of all time and a lot of other people's favorite philodendrons because of those beautiful backs of those leaves and the fronts really, but I am just absolutely in love with mine currently. The leaves are just absolutely massive since establishing itself on its beautiful moss pole. And I do have a video where I did propagate this beautiful plant and started all the way over and it has already reached the top of the moss pole all over again. So it will be needing a, another propagation chop, at least on this particular really large vine that has reached the top again. And as you can see from the thickness of the vine the plant is starting to really really mature and give me some really beautifully large leaves i was moving this plant around i had it in my ikea greenhouse cabinet my tall mills bow that i recently put together i do have a reel on my instagram if you did want to see the process of that cabinet being built go check out that reel i was experimenting having the varicosum in there but as soon as this recent leaf started to unfurl it actually reached the top of of the grow light and I did not want anything bad to happen to this beautiful new leaf and so I ended up just moving it back into the plant room as you can see and I absolutely love this plant. It has given me absolutely no problems except for the minor attacks from spider mites every now and again but I really haven't even seen any spider mites in my collection since early 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 this year so they like to kind of strike my collection during the winter I've seen when I'm kind of off my game with treating and preventing my plants by spraying them down with either switching off with Captain Jack's or I have a little concoction that I make with alcohol hydrogen peroxide and some Dawn dish soap that I just sort of mix around in a bottle and soapily suds up the leaves Leaves and then give them a good rinsing every once in a while. But that is when I decide to kind of take all of my plants on moss poles outside, give them a good rinsing and drench their moss poles down. And I really haven't done that in a while, so I really should because I have been battling again, mealybugs, but nothing that we can't take care of and just treating the plants every sort of two weeks, making sure that I'm not missing any treatments to eradicate this situation. And luckily I haven't seen too much damage, but better safe than sorry than to wait on if damage were to occur and not just start spraying down your plants immediately once you see damage or even notice or even suspect that you might have a pest infestation so so it's always really good to be on top of those things but other than pests and nothing has really even been on this plant in particular like I said so with all that being said I'm just really happy and lucky that this plant has had a really great growing season and has been giving me some super beautifully massive leaves and I thought it was a really great plant to start off our list today and to show off a really big beautiful juicy leaf. So that was our first plant, my philodendron varicosum. The next plant on our list is actually one of my favorite plants in my collection and it quickly became one of my favorites only this growing season because of its sheer amount of growth. I did also mention this plant in a recent monthly houseplant favorites video so if you did want to go check that out I do appreciate you but the plant I am referring to is my ficus umbilata so I will be again including b-roll of her because she is just so massive and I am a little actually afraid of what I'm going to have to do with her this 
this winter and if she will even fit into the doorway. I know I can probably maneuver her but it's definitely going to be a tight squeeze and I'm guessing I'm going to have to find a spot maybe in front of my big window here that I like to film in front of or just finding a nice spot for it in the plant room because there are plenty of grow lights and it does have a lot of eastern facing windows to get lots of morning light streaming in and if it were to just go into the plant room it wouldn't be a big change of scenery for it since it is literally just on the outside window of my plant room so that would probably be the most logical place to put it but as you can see it is just a massive massive plant and is basically turning into a tree like ficus do and are i guess but i just am so in awe of how big these dinner plate like leaves are i always call it my big dinner plate lady because again she just has these big plate like leaves and and as you can see they are just so so huge and pillowy and they actually have a really cool texture to them they're almost paper they're very very thin leaves like the, you can definitely tear them easily they're very paper like and very very different than the elastica ficus trees that are actually surrounding it and I have many varieties of those as well but the elastica leaves are much thicker and almost a waxy feel to them whereas the umbilata is very very again thin and paper like and just really really a unique leaf and again one of my favorite plants in my collection just due to its really unique growth pattern and now again it's really big size that I've gotten it to so this has definitely been a really really fun plant to watch grow and I definitely recommend it to anyone wanting to start out in the ficus world it is a very very easy care ficus and if you live in a warmer climate like me they do appreciate being outside if you are going to have them in a pot during the growing season to get all of that extra heat and humidity if you're in Florida like me. So again, I do recommend this beautiful plan. If you are looking for a more tree-like foliage to add to your house, this is the perfect plant in my opinion. So I did have to obviously include it in today's video because of those massive leaves. One of my favorite plants and I just had to share with you guys today. So that was our second plant on our list today, my Ficus umbilata. The next plant on our list today is actually a plant I mentioned in my very recent October houseplant favorites video. It is actually in the big thumbnail. It is my huge, massively beautiful Anthurium crystallinum, and I am only going to kind of quickly mention it since I did rant and rave about it in the last video. So again, as you can see, just these big, beautiful, pillowy, velvet-like anthurium leaves are some of my favorite to collect and I know again the anthurium crystallinum is a common anthurium nowadays and a lot of people have it in their collections but for good reason and if you don't have one in your collection I highly recommend it. It is definitely one of the easier care anthurium in my collection and it requires very little effort to get these big beautiful pillowy leaves so if you are interested in getting into the anthurium family I definitely recommend starting with the crystallinum just because of how easy the care is and just how quickly the leaves will upsize for you and why I did want to mention it in my biggest leaves video today because she is definitely up there in how big my leaves are so I definitely had to give her a little honorable mention even though I just recently mentioned her so that was my anthurium crystallinum so to kind of roll on into the next plant, it is another anthurium, but much different than my crystallinum. It is actually a more pendant-like anthurium, and I have never mentioned this plant on my channel before, so it is definitely going to be really cool getting to show you guys this plant. I may have shown it in one of my plant haul newest plants videos, so it could be in one of those, but I don't think I've really given it a lot of spotlight yet, and that plant I am referring to is my my anthurium pendulifolium and this anthurium is still sort of a mystery to me I am still sort of letting it acclimate watering it when it is dry or not even really letting it dry out because as we all know anthurium do not like to have their roots completely dried out since they are a very high humidity moisture loving plant so I have not let the root ball ever dry out I sort of pick up the pot and make sure that she is semi heavy before I give her another thorough watering. But as you can see from its beautiful long 
pendant like leaves you can see where it gets its name from i actually got my particular plant from calvin at tennessee tropicals during my trip back home in august of this year and i could not be more happy with my purchase because his mother plant i wish i got a photo of it was absolutely massive so so beautiful and he had his actually hanging upside down from a big beautiful like cocoa coir pot so one day i will probably do the same for mine i'm just sort of still learning about this beautiful plant and getting to know its care and trying to make sure i am doing it justice so that i can make it as big and beautiful as calvin's beautiful mother plant as you guys can see i definitely had to include this big long leafed anthurium in today's video it would not be fitting without it so that is definitely why i had to include it today so yeah that was my number four plant for today my anthurium pendulifolium so the next plant on our list today is another pendant like anthurium and i have mentioned it on my channel before and it is my anthurium palatiflorum and i absolutely am in love with this anthurium it is another again really easy care plant for me and it's actually a lot easier for me to tell when i need to water this anthurium because it is in a hanging basket and as you can tell from the footage it is just such a velvety long beautifully almost like a very sheen type leaf and the newest leaf kind of came out a little battered I don't know if it was just sort of unfurling weird within its little sheath before it started to come out and then they kind of they kind of look like little like string beans for a while and then they get really really long as they start to sort of expand once they are out of their sheath and I don't know maybe I bumped into it or something while touching it or looking at it when it was still small and that's what ended up happening but the rest of the leaves look really really good and it actually is working on another leaf it looks like and yeah I again just think this anthurium is just super super easy care really really easy for me to tell when I need to water it just based on me kind of taking it off of its hook and picking it up and seeing if it's dry or not I think maybe that it being in a hanging pot is a little bit scary at times because I don't always know to check on it and make sure that it is still moisturized and the plant is not sitting there drying out the roots completely because when you go back to rehydrate those roots nine times out of ten it will probably root rot your anthurium so you want to keep those roots from completely drying out to prevent that having it in a hanging basket can sort of mess with the ability for me to grab it and make sure that everything is watered thoroughly so it is kind of a gift and a curse but yeah i am just getting to know this plant even more and more as i continue to have it and i again could not be more in love with this more pendant like long leafed anthurium and that is why I had to mention it today. So that was our, I think, fifth plant for today, the Anthurium palatiflorum. Alrighty, so our next plant is actually one I could actually grab for you guys. It's still really big, but I was able to grab it out of the plant room and move it on over here. And it is another anthurium, not a pendant-like, but very, very unique and still really, really large leaves. So I did want to mention it today and show you all why I absolutely love this anthurium. So the anthurium I was referring to is my big, lusciously beautiful anthurium luxuriens. So as you can see here, she is freaking huge. It is like a freaking dinosaur egg scale, basically. Here is the newest leaf. This is the leaf that I first produced in my care after bringing it home last year. I got this plant at the International Aeroid Show back in 2021. It was the first plant show I ever went to and I had to come home with one of these bad boys when I saw it from Equigenera. I could not be more happy with this plant. It, as you can see, I've had this leaf since I believe it unfurled in like October. Like it, I've had this leaf for a year basically since uh, last October. It unfurled itself and it became beautifully magical. And then I got this leaf probably closer to the beginning of this year maybe even summer like the beginning of summertime i can't really remember but the reason why i also wanted to give this girl a mention and sort of explain why she is starting to yellow on the borders of some of her leaves even the newest leaf is kind of taking some damage which is because 
As you can see here, we can hide behind this. As you can see here, this big, beautiful luxuriance is actually putting out an inflorescence as well as a big beautiful new leaf so it is taking up a lot of energy and what i do plan on doing is cutting off this inflorescence here for the past couple of days i had only seen like this barely coming out of the plant so now that as you can see there's a little bit more of a stem to it where i can cut it i am going to go ahead and cut this inflorescence off just so the plant has enough energy to focus on putting out this beautiful new baby leaf so i I think it is just such a cool plant to see whenever new leaves emerge and it is about time I had a new leaf come in on this plant because again as you can see the older leaves are starting to kind of go out just because they have been putting all their energy into that inflorescence and the new leaf coming so I am just super excited to show you guys it in person and I think I have obviously taken pictures of this guy on my Instagram and stuff but I don't think like size and like scale you could ever really tell how ginormous it was so I'm glad I was able to have it next to me in this video today so you guys could see just how truly massive this big dinosaur girl truly is so I will be cutting off that inflorescence here after I'm done filming and hopefully the new leaf will have plenty of energy to start putting itself out and starting to grow larger and larger. So I will definitely keep you guys updated on how that new leaf continues to unfurl and starts to size up and get bigger and bigger as it comes out of its little sheath. They kind of emerge very, very bright bright strawberry colored and then sort of dark into this really dark scaly green lizard color that you see here so one of my favorite in theory and because again it's just so like if you can like they are so hard and tough and they don't usually have a lot of damage to them because again they are a very hardy leaf and i have had a really good experience with them and besides the little cosmetic damage of putting all of its energy into the new leaves coming i could not be more happy with this plant so i did have to give her a mention today so that was our number six plant for today my anthurium luxurians Alrighty, so the last plant we have on today's video is a massive one. It is the largest leaf I have in my collection and probably the largest plant I have in my collection as well, just as like a whole. So without further ado, the last plant on our list today is my Monstera Deliciosa. And specifically my Monstera Deliciosa that I leave in have in the ground outside of my house. So at the beginning of this year, we actually planted my Monstera Deliciosa into the ground at the base of one of our oak trees. And as you can see from the footage, it has absolutely taken off. It has put about probably five leaves out since putting it in the ground this growing season. And we only had around one last really frosty sort of night in March right after I planted it so I sort of freaked out whenever I saw in the forecast that the weather was going to drop earlier this year and potentially kill my big beautiful cutting that I worked all winter propagating and getting ready for this moment and I had even potted it up and got it ready in the move and took it with us from the house so that I could plant this big beautiful monstera outside because I know in South Florida, other parts of Florida, they can just thrive outside if given the proper conditions. And yeah, so that very last frost kind of snap of the season earlier this year, I went ahead and threw a tarp over the monstera to protect it from any frostbite or whatever you want to call it. And it ended up working and she has thrived ever since. I barely even have to water her just because it rains so frequently here in Florida and the humidity as well really adds to that. So really the only time I have to worry about watering is during the winter. And even then I don't really have to worry about it as much because they don't require as much watering in the winter time. And I believe the ground itself holds a lot of moisture regardless. So the roots I believe are staying relatively saturated for the most part for a long period of time just because there's so much moisture in the ground, if that makes sense. So yeah, this has just been a really, really 
really cool plant to watch grow. I'm hoping this winter we don't get a lot of cold nights and that I can again just throw a tarp right over her and not have her receive too much cold damage this winter and I just hope and pray that she does well. So again, pray for her and I will keep you guys updated on her new leaves. So yeah, I absolutely love when she puts out a new leaf. It is so flimsy and pretty. So I am just totally impressed with this plant. I had to mention it today and show you guys that having plants outdoors is totally possible if you protect them even in like central Florida like me when I get a few freezes a year it can be possible to have tropical plants outside so I really wanted to show you guys that lady and hopefully by next year this time she will be actually touching the tree and even maybe even climbing it so really keeping my fingers crossed and hoping for the best for that beautiful plant but with that it does bring us to the end of today's video so let's go ahead and and roll the outro. Alrighty, that does bring us to the end of today's video. I so do hope you enjoyed getting to see the biggest leaves in my plant collection. And if you did stick all the way to the end, I do appreciate you. And please ask that you leave a like, a comment down below, or even subscribing so that you are notified every time I upload a new video and to help me keep on planting. Please also don't forget to follow me on Instagram at plant.hippie where I post new planty photos daily. So with that, I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.